Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Bookworm Turns, another adventure of George Valentine. My dear Mr. Valentine... I am the owner of a small bookshop. If you are familiar at all with rare editions, I am sure you will recognize my name, Paul Jacobs Humber. Well, I need your advice. You've heard of bookworms, haven't you? Of Abraham Lincoln studying by candlelight? Of students rioting to keep libraries open so that men may learn? Well, for the past two nights, my shop has been broken into... But I simply can't bring myself to call the police because nothing is stolen. Not a book, not a penny from the cash register. So you must be with me tonight by 10 o'clock. Because, Mr. Valentine, I believe I am being visited by the most ardent bookworm of them all. A man who jimmies a window merely for the purpose of reading my books. Yes, reading. But reading what? And why? Certainly have enough books, Mr. Humber. Don't you ever sell any? Uh, well, well, these racks go out in front when the shop is open, Miss Brooks. Careful, oh. careful. Six for a dollar, but huh? If we're trying to surprise anyone, it seems to me... Uh, oh, no, he, he's never broken in this early. I've often stayed here myself till 10 or 11, Mr. Valentine. I've never seen the guy yourself, huh? Only why do I say guy? Why do you say he? Uh, here, there's an aisle through here. Just follow me. I don't want to turn the lights on. Mr. Humber, why do you... I heard you, I heard you, yes, yes. Uh, I am just guessing, that's all. Uh Uh-huh. Is that the window over there? No, 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 no. The window on the other side of the stockroom. Alley entrance, huh? Yes. Uh, Here, my office is in here. We can wait a while. You mean curl up with a book and wait all night? (laughs) Oh, he'll be here. uh... What in the... Sounds more like a music store. Well, come on. Hello, Hall. I've been waiting for... Oh. Uh, uh, Rosa. I was just listening to some phonograph records. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this is Miss Brooks, uh, Mr. Valentine, uh, Mrs. Kulich, uh, wife of my assistant Otto here in the shop. Uh, she does some of my bookkeeping, too. Oh, how Hello. do you do? Hello. Hall, Otto had to go uptown to see somebody. Uh, we live right next door to the little apartment. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kulich doesn't have a phonograph in her apartment. We, uh... You have records here, too, a few of them. I understand. Well, she can join the party and well, have Mrs. a... Mrs. Uh, Coolidge isn't the bookworm type, is she? What? Huh? Oh, 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 no, no, no. She wouldn't be the one. I mean, she has her own keys. What is all oh, this? Oh. oh, I'm in the way, aren't I, Mr. Humber? Well, it, it's something I didn't mention, that's all, Rosa. Are you married, Mr. Humber? I beg your pardon? Oh, oh no, 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 I'm not, but... Shh. Huh? Well, uh, excuse me now. I'll be leaving uh, shh. if you... Uh, be quiet. Well, won't someone tell me what no, on no, earth... stop it, stop it. You hear that, Valentine? Yeah. It wasn't a car in the alley. I'm sure of that. No, it's from back someplace. Uh, stock room. Well, what are you listening for? Will you please... Uh, uh, come on, come on, through here. Yeah. A little early, though, isn't it? your bookworm to arrive. There. Here, you see it? A light? Yeah, flashlight. Get out of the way. Get him! Get him! Get home, Mr. Humber. Uh, I thought you saw... I saw the shade on the door glass blowing, that's all. But the door's been forced, all right. Still open. Uh, He's already gone. He must have heard us. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks that way. He he ran out and down the alley. You, You see, it is true, Mr. Valentine, every night. Get the light switch. Oh, yes. 
Well, but look around. Nothing is touched again. Nothing's ever touched. Here, you see? A new set of first editions just in from Boston. And not even disturbed. Mr. Valentine? Right here, Mr. Hubbard. That's where I saw the flashlight. Uh, what? Your visitor seems to be interested in old books, not new ones. Believe it or not, you're right. He apparently was reading. This book is still open. Well, let me see. What is it? Oh, what? Some power of the gifted gears to see ourselves as others see us. Robert Burns? Burns? Why should I know why anybody should like Robert Burns? My background is a printer, Mr. Valentine, not the Oxford Book of English Words. Okay, okay, Otto. I waited to see you because I thought you might have noticed something unusual. I am handyman, shelf dust, and salesman in the shop. Should I have time to notice anything? For three nights running, somebody's been breaking in here. To read books. To read books? What is wrong with that? What would you like? People should only watch... Television? Oh, now look, Frank. I know I don't help you. My wife don't help you. It is late. I'm tired. But this humble, my boss, don't you understand? He is uh, what you call uh, persecution with complexes. A what? Always and everything he sees a mystery. So somebody should break in to read. He should make something of this. Always make something of everything. Why should he worry? There is no damage, is there? No damage All to right, his... All right, skip it, Otto, skip it. Hmm? You say nobody's up to anything, huh? No damage to Mr. Humber? Why worry? What do you but mean? But Burns is the word, all right. Burns? Can't you tell a fire engine when you hear one? Now, what do you think that smoke's coming from? Come on, let's get out of here. Only nothing's been damaged, George. Somebody broke into Humber's store during the night and didn't steal anything, and now there's a fire, but nothing is damaged. Credit luck and the fire department for that, Angel. Oh, water, water. Just look at the water. What's the matter, Humber? Ruin a few bindings? Oh, no, no. It isn't important. Only the six for a dollar ones, but... Mr. Valentine, what is it? What's going on? Who is trying to do what to me? The bookworm who reads Burns certainly didn't start the fire, or it would have burned up my entire stock. No, George, the fire didn't actually start here. Ah, but it was aimed here. If the engines hadn't been so close... The place next door almost burned to the ground. That was the reason for the fire here. An old apartment, yes, yes, where Rosa and Otto live, but they don't own anything. There was no loss to anybody. Oh, no. It was here, all right, at me, that the fire was aimed. Only why... Mr. Humber, suppose you give me a chance to find out. Hey, uh, Brooksy, there was a fire investigator here a minute ago. Let's find oh, him. There he is, over there, George. But, Mr. Valentine... I said I'll do it my own way, thanks. Hey, you. Hey, you, Mac. Hey, I want to talk... Oh. Are you addressing me, young man? I, uh, I thought you were somebody else. Maharaja of Ranapur, perhaps? J.P. Morgan's ghost? Any law against my being me? Sorry. And what are you staring at, mademoiselle? Hmm? Didn't you ever see a shirt with no collar before? It's to display the hair on my chest, naturally. Gray, quite unusual, don't you think? Okay, friend, skip No, it. George. You'll what? find the children's books on the next counter. What's that one you're looking at? What are you doing here? Georgie, porgy, puddin' and pie. What's it look like I'm doing? Taking a bath, naturally. Kiss the girls and say goodbye. Yeah, let me see that. Get your hands off me. It's a bookstore, isn't it? It's open for business. I'll say it is. It's wide open now. So the book you're interested in is Certain Poems by Robert Burns. Yes, a book of Burns' poems. I just picked it up. I suppose you're from the T.S. Eliot Protective hey, League. What is all this? What is going on? What George, the... it's the same book. I came here to buy this book. Any objections? No, no, friend. Just questions. Like, uh, why? Ah, people. Look here. Edinburgh edition. The Four Dials Press, 1793. Yeah. Yeah, it's an old edition, all right. A very authentic edition, a very rare one. Oh, so I see. Priced at $750. I didn't notice that before. Oh, it is quite valuable, Mr. Valentine. It turned up in a bunch of second-hand things Otto picked up at auction. That's what is so peculiar. Why the bookworm didn't steal it. Wait a minute. I think it's even more peculiar how this man happened to know it was here. Yeah. 
How about that, friend? My name is Jess. Henry Jess. Not friend. Not even to my enemies. Jess, the critic? Well, I salute you, Mr. Humber. Fame, isn't it wonderful? Yes, yes. Henry Jess, the man who sells his brain for a few dollars a month to sell a book magazine. Hey, hey, get back on the rails, will you? I ask you a simple How question. I knew that book was here? A man told me. Not a bird, a man. What man? Here. An envelope. No, 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 not for you. For you, Mr. Humber. Oh, a man in my impecunious state will do anything for a commission. Even talk to the likes of you. I do buying once in a while for collectors so they can pretend that they know how to pick out the authentic items themselves. Yeah, but this guy's name, the man interested in this particular book. Why should I bother with his name? I don't know. Just a fat man, that's all. Don't ask me how he knew I'd find the edition here. I don't know that either. Emery Whitzel. What? His name. Uh, just a note. Authorization saying he'd be willing to pay up... Give the... me that. Uh, uh... Well, what's the matter, Mr. Jess? What's the matter with the name Emery Whitzel? Your client, isn't he? Nothing. Nothing. I didn't realize that was his name, that's all. Just a man who phoned and asked me to make the purchase for him. Look, I'm getting sick and tired well, of all this Well, it is a perfectly legal authorization, Mr. Valentine. And you too, Mr. Humber. You give me a case that's like a jellyfish. You can't grab onto it. Uh, the case of a bookworm, Mr. Valentine. Never mind. You're a little slippery yourself. Yes, but I've never heard of Emery Whitzel. Be quiet, will you? It's this guy I'm talking to who... Uh, see... What? Otto! Hey, Otto. Otto, what's the matter? What happened? Oh, George, there's blood on his... Look, he's been shot. No, no, let... Go. I... Whitson. What? Bookworm. Henry. Henry Whitson. I take it all back, Mr. Humber. It's a case now, all right. Otto's dead. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Listen to the difference. Yes, now you can actually hear authentic scientific proof of the difference between new RPM motor oil and premium type motor oils as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Auto engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings. And during operation, minute particles of radioactive metal wear off the rings. Geiger counters are thus able to detect the amount of wear actually taking place. Listen now as the Geiger counters click off the difference. First, the low wear rate of the new RPM. Now, the much faster wear rate of the conventional oil. Now, new RPM again. You have just heard authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engines between major overhauls due to lubrication. Proved in the laboratory and checked out in severe road service, new RPM motor oil is sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction. Ask for it at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Oh, had some power the gift to gee us to see ourselves as others see us. Yes, if your name is George Valentine, that's how your case started. Just a book of poems by Robert Burns. A valuable early edition from the Four Dials Press in Edinburgh. A book that someone broke into Mr. Humber's shop just to read. A book that an agent wanted to buy for a collector named Emery Whitzel. And who is Emery Whitzel? Well, Lieutenant Johnson of Homicide has an opinion on that because now it seems the little book may have been the cause of murder. And those were his dying words, weren't they? Witzel. Emery Witzel, he tried to tell you. That's right, Johnson. Otto had apparently been shot just a couple of minutes before out in the street. And then came staggering in for help or to tell us... To tell you who did it, that Witzel did it. Isn't that the usual interpretation? Yeah. Only who is Witzel? Well, now you're asking something else. Well, we'll find him. Don't worry. Oh, don't be too sure. It's like finding the bookworm who disappeared the minute we got close. You ask me, this guy Humber knows a lot more than Uh he... Uh-huh. He's the one hired me. It's as much Greek to him as it is to us. Hey, Johnson, check up on that file, will you, how it started? What? How can you connect a... I don't know. Just do it, will you? We've only scratched the surface of this thing so far. But we'll never get deeper unless we retrace what we already got. 
Like what you said, Brooksy, that the bookworm disappeared. No, he was in the shop last night, but he got away. Correction, Angel. He was scared away before we ever got a chance to see him. Isn't that what really happened? You mean all that phonograph noise and Rosa? Uh-huh. Yeah. I wonder how she's feeling now that she's a widow. Please leave me alone. I don't know anything. I'm I'm sorry, Mrs. Coolidge, but you have to help us. Well, I'm confused. I Why were you in Mr. Humber's office last night in the first place? It wasn't just to listen to records, was it? Oh, I know what you're thinking, but it's not true. Yes, I like Mr. Humber. In some ways, he's been closer than Otto ever was. But you can't make anything out of it. Otto was my husband. But he's dead now. It's all over. So what's everybody hiding? Nothing, just... Give me time. Let me think a little while. I'll give you two seconds to tell us who was in the stockroom last night. What? When we heard him, you talked loud on purpose. You gave him a warning, a chance to get away. No, I didn't. Who was it, your husband? No. Is that what you're so upset about? Wondering whether or not you should be loyal to a dead husband? No, it wasn't, Otto. I don't know who it was breaking into the store, going through the old edition. Well, you but... claimed your husband was uptown at the time, I remember. Well, but it's I... true. He was. I don't believe he it. He was. I'm not lying. He was at the Bedford Hotel, room 217. Wow. Well, now we're getting someplace. The Bedford Hotel, huh? Seeing whom? man named Witzel, maybe? No. I don't know any more than that. I don't. Okay, lady. Maybe for now that's enough. It's the middle of the afternoon, friend. Come on, open the door. You got the wrong room. 217 Bedford Hotel. Come on, open up. So you can read. I'm impressed. Yes, and in about one minute, I'll spell out the letters on a badge for you. Come on, come on. Dick Tracy badge? Oh, get back in there. All right. No need to show off your vitamin. Ah, looks like we hit pay dirt fast, eh, Valentine? Yeah, I see what you mean, Johnson. Big fat guy. Answers that book agent's description, all right. Hey, what is this? What's this all about? You tell us, Mr. Witzel. Wrong number. Now, look, wise guy, we're trying to find Name out. is McGurk. Horace McGurk. And don't try to... Novelties is my line. A surprise for every party. Little Egypt. Watch your shimmy and shake. Exploding cigars. And if you want to shake hands instead... What? Don't smell a carnation on my coat. Only look out Cut for it, it out. Cut it out. Salesman, huh? Sure. Identification. Here, see? Huh? Go on, I won't bite you. Horace J. McGurk, Ace High Novelties, New York, New York. So admit your mistake, boy. <laughs> That's probably Mabel. Uh, I'll ask if she's got a couple of dumb friends for you. Uh, hey, get away from that. Hello? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is me. Go ahead. You know, let's hear it. A coincidence. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Thanks. <laughs> My friend, Mabel's a sergeant. I told him to phone here. Sergeant? <laughs> I guess I wouldn't have enjoyed the day. If he got anything. And he did. Well, let's have it, Jensen. Record on Emery Witzel. Oh, sure, sure. There's a record. There's such a guy, all right, or there was ten years ago. Yeah. In the phony book business in New York. Small world. That's my town. What else, Jensen? What do you mean, phony book business? I mean like in forgeries, fakes for genuine. Like maybe that book back there in the shop, the Robert Burns? Who knows? But now, as for you, my friend... New York is such an intimate place. Just sit yourself down and relax, because ten years ago, you would have been about the right age to... Hold it, Johnson. To start fires, maybe. Huh? Yeah. You were in the lighter fluid business, too, McGurk, huh? Uh-huh. One, two, three, four, five, six cans... It's perfume. It's a gag, you dopes. A novelties. I showed you my identification. What's perfume? a... Perfume? Let me see what it smells Get away like. from that coat, McGurk. Hey, Johnson, duck. You're hot, be hot foot to your friend so long. Oh. Holy smoke. Those shots came through the transom. Come on. Somebody been in the next room all the time. Officer, can you hear me? Got away down the hall. Fire escape door's open. McGurk's dead, all right. A Witzel, whoever he is. Yes, I'll cover the other end. Just get that street closed off fast. No, no, how should I know who it was? Come on, Valentine. Why? To be five blocks behind, skip it. 
Besides, maybe the answer's right here. Huh? This gun of McGurk's. He fired twice, but there's another shell missing. That could be the one that killed Otto. Looks like about the same caliber. What in the... Never mind. Just grab it for a lab check. Because there was lighter fluid in these cans, Johnson. Smell them. And an empty whiskey bottle on him. Sure, that's what he carried it in. It's empty, too. Okay, so your hunch was right. This guy started the fire, but it doesn't... Let's get pro- back to the place where the fire was. I got an idea. Well, this is what's left of their apartment, Otto and Rose's. Fire really wrecked it, didn't it? Yeah, so far the only thing to explain anything is a copy of Robert Burns. Two murders for 750 bucks. One at a time, Johnson. McGurk did the first one, right? Sure, sure. It looks like the bullet will check, all right. So somebody else did the second one. Brilliant. McGurk, Whitzel, or whoever he was didn't kill himself. So it's 375 bucks for each murderer. Yeah, wait a minute. What's this? I don't know. Piece of an old lathe, maybe. Hey, Brooksy. Here I am, George. Any luck with Mrs. Coolidge yet? Oh, she won't say anything until she's talked with Mr. Humber. Uh-huh. Never mind. You ever see a steel arm like this on a lathe? George, what on earth is or that? Oh, here. Heavy wooden screw. Or what's left of it. Hey. Printing press. Now you're getting it. Old-fashioned small printing press. And Otto was a printer, wasn't he? Well, he had been in the past, I remember. Johnson, I... suppose Mrs. Coolidge knew her husband was up to something that she didn't like. But the, the phony book business. And that means Humber and that other guy, Jess, are tied right up with it. Take it easy. There was a bookworm, wasn't there? That person wouldn't have been tied up with Otto. Otherwise, why prowl around? George, you mean Otto was printing books? Oh, not money. It takes a long time. But sure, remember? Humber even told us Otto himself had picked up the copy of Burns at auction. Book, schmooks, a lousy $700 oh, wait worth a minute. Of... Listen, be quiet, will you? Huh? Just a car, wasn't it, yeah. in the alley? Hey, hey. Somebody got out and went in the shop there. Come on. So the bookworm is a sucker, huh? Coming back for the book. Up in McGurk's room, I said the book was still in the shop. Well, that person in the next room, the one who killed him, also could have heard us, check. Well, but coming back to the place... Shh, wait a minute, hold it. Wait a minute, I want to check that truck. Let's see the registration card. Well, it's McGurk's car. George, look, in the back... Oh, no, no. Not another body. Box seven or eight foot long, just about the right size for a body. Haven't you figured yet what might be really valuable in this deal worth committing murder for? George, what are you talking worth about? Worth trying to get away from Otto and then having to kill him? Worth burning the apartment so people wouldn't know about the press? Here, here, give me a hand. Let's see what's inside this box. Type. Yeah. Loose type. That's right, old style print. Here, yeah, look at the funny capital, see? Sure, Johnson, it's type. Maybe one book is only worth seven fifty, But think what a few hundred supposedly authentic books scattered in markets all over the world would be worth. Holy mackerel. Big enough I... for you now, isn't it? George. Huh? Oh, here, quick, this way. Coming back again, out of the store. Hold it, hold it. Must be able to see us, man. You got company, friend. Be careful, that gun. Stay That's here. The... Kind of a dumb stunt, wasn't it? Coming back to get that one book so there'd be no record of what Otto's type looked like? How are you so far in over your head anyway that... That's so. Oh, gonna talk, huh? It's all right. I don't know who you are for sure. Now, go on. Otto tried to gasp out the name Emery Whitzel, but that didn't do us much good. Whoever it is uses a different name now. But then I thought of a poem which says, To see ourselves as others see us. Move back, I said. It suddenly occurred to me Otto wasn't trying to say who his killer was. He was just trying to talk to one of the two people there with me. I said I'm moving now. Just take it easy. Back from the car. You mean under the car, because there's a cop to the right of you, Mr. Jess, who's about one second... Oh, excuse me. I guess it was to the left. Yeah, Angel, it was a big-time operation, all right, with a double cross for good measure. You see, Jess and McGurk had found out about that antique type that Otto had made as a hobby, maybe. I don't know whether Otto intended to use it crookedly or not. (laughs) Perhaps he slipped in the copy of the Robert Burns to see how successful he was. 
Yeah, but George, which one was the bookworm? Jess, of course. You don't think a guy like McGurk could have told a book from a racetrack sheet, do you? Well, no, but why did Jess want to buy the book then? If he... Because he was the brain, Angel. The other guy was the arm. But the arm double-crossed him. You see, Jess thought he was going to run it real clever. But McGurk found he couldn't buy off Otto, so he shot him and stole the type and set fire to the place. And Jess didn't even know about all that until he opened that letter right in front of him. Mm-hmm. To find that his partner had signed the name Witzel to it. He did it so Jess, who was really Witzel, would have to go into hiding again while McGurk walked off with a loop. Oh, nice people. So Jess turned into an arm himself and killed McGurk. No, I thought it was Mr. Humber and Mrs. Coolidge. To see ourselves as others see it. It would from many a blunder free us. <laughs> and foolish notion. Hmm? Foolish notion. To keep one's eyes on the emotions instead of the facts. Sometimes you can be the most egotistical. Rosa Coolidge loves that guy Humber. But she was loyal the to her husband. The most insufferable. Of course, he doesn't make sense. But... Arrogant. But Conceited. Then women in love seldom do. Why, you... Don't kill me, Angel. You wanted it explained, didn't you? Hmm. But I know a clue you don't. The name of that poem of Robert Burns you're so glib about. Hmm? What's that? It's called To a Louse. Good night, George. Hmm. Listen to the difference. In a few seconds, you'll hear Geiger counters measuring automobile engine wear. The engines are equipped with irradiated piston rings, which make it possible for the Geiger counters to detect wear as it occurs. You will hear authentic scientific proof that new RPM motor oil cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts, doubles the life of the average auto engine between major overhauls due to lubrication. First, let's listen to the Geiger counter slowly click off the low wear rate of new RPM. Now the much faster wear rate of a premium type oil as designated by the American Petroleum Institute. Now new RPM again. You have just heard Geiger counters clicking off the scientific proof that new RPM motor oil is years ahead. Yes, years ahead. New RPM doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. Try it. Sold with a money-back guarantee of satisfaction at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Daly has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Bob Griffin as Humber, Bill Conrad as Jess, Jack Crucian as McGurk, and Lillian Bayef as Rosa. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>